so Stu, Holly, Ram and I are out with the 50 cal, got the earmuffs for it, and we're going to try and whistle in a fox. So we saw a few foxes out in this place, I think it was a week or two ago, so going to come out and try and get one with a 50. Remy's in the car behind us, so we're just going to walk probably a couple hundred metres just over into the next little gully, and then have a call, hopefully we can get something coming in. As soon as I looked through the binders and saw this tabby cat, I'm like, oh, good. That must have just clean punch through. Yeah. I was 100% expecting that thing to explode. Good spot. Uh, so, the new little mini fox whistle from In the Dark. I don't know who makes that actual whistle. Uh, so, I can't remember the brand of this whistle, but it was from In the Dark when Stu did the fox comp, and this is the mini. And yeah, we just set up there with a 50 cal, expecting foxes to come out, because Holly and I saw a couple here last weekend. And yeah, started blowing the whistle and almost straight away saw a cat just over there. It was sort of looking over at us. It wasn't coming in, but made its presence known. And Stu has just dropped the hammer with a 50 cal. <laughs> Feral cat with a 50. Where's the cat, Rim? Where's the cat? Go get him. Go get him. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to need room for this one because 750 grain pill looks like it just punched straight through. So it'll be interesting if we find the cat or not. Like, it's definitely dead, but when you've just got that much punching power and it's gone straight through with no expansion, yeah, it might have ended up down a hole or a hollow log or something. So we will see. Hopefully we can find it. So, there's a drop of blood there, and it's up in this bloody hollow, so we're going to have to try and get it out somehow. <laughs> but at least we know it's there, worst case is we'll just bring a chainsaw back tomorrow. Yeah, so we've just had a suss on this log, the hollow that the cat went into, and there is no way we're going to be able to get it out without a saw. So we're going to come back, Holly and I will probably hunt the morning, I'm guessing Stu will not hunt the morning because he sucks at being a morning person. but. He'll probably bring the saws up a bit later, we'll hunt in the morning and then meet him up here and we'll get some saws on the job and get this cat out. Rim. Straight past it. Rim. Not much of a casty dog, Rem. What's this? Oh, good girl, Rem. Good girl. Is that a casty, Rem? Oh, I don't want that bit. I want the bit it's attached to. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, casty dog, Rem. <laughs> very restricted. With all these layers. Too many layers? Yeah. It is proper wet now, but we've just walked up to another gully, so the cat's still in that hollow log. We'll deal with that tomorrow, but we're going to try and whistle up a fox now. So we just walked up to a different ridge, got this great vantage point, and yeah. The heavens have opened up on us, but anyway, we're going to try and get it done. We tried, and it is raining even heavier now, so we're absolutely saturated. I think that's going to be a wrap for today, and yeah, hopefully we can get a hunt in in the morning if it's not too wet, but otherwise we'll be just trying to get that cat out. As predicted, Stu has decided to sleep in, so Holly and I came out. My original plan was to potentially get a fallow deer with the 50 cow. But while we were walking to where I thought I was going to see fellow deer, there was a fox up on the hill. Tried to get the camera and then the 50 and the hearing protection and sunglasses on because shooting the 50 without glasses is a little bit average. And by the time I'd done all that, the fox had started mooching away and yeah, just never ended up working out for us unfortunately so <laughs> Yeah. 
this up. Oh no! <laughs> well, you didn't cut through him. That was close though. Yeah. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> Not bad. Stew made. What? Three cuts. The cat was right there. Lucked out. <laughs> Didn't even hit it with the saw. <laughs> Nearly did. <laughs> now, everyone now knows that AMAXs aren't good vomiting pills. <laughs> yeah, basically just clean punch through. Shot was a tiny bit far back. It's about 10 metres from where I shot it, but cats aren't exactly a big target, so centre mass it was. Anyway, it's got the job done. So Holly and I are just walking up one of the dreaded hills on this property. It's steep as. But there's some fallow deer down into our left here. So hopefully we can get up above them, drop him with the bow and make it happen. must have smelt us because we never caught up with them again so just making our way down to overlook another little spot where we used to see a heap of deer and hopefully there's something out there drying out because we've just had like 140 mil of rain and now the sun's out steamy as so yeah hopefully there's a few deer out drying out just walked over the ridge and there's like quite a strong breeze here and there's a fellow like 20 meters in front of us now so hopefully Ollie can get a shot on it. It looks like you've got good handle to fell, but that's all. Only didn't have antlers, <laughs> or if he had hard antlers. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. More out there. I thought we were on then, but as soon as I saw his antler development, I uh, had to tell Holly no, because <laughs> he's just yeah, not the sort of deer we want to shoot. Which is hard because like he was well within bow range, but it was still cool just watching him. If that had been a doe or a spike or something young. Yeah, it would have been game over. But anyway, we're we'll, uh, going to make our way back down the hill, follow our original plan, and try and get onto another one.
was like, what was that, like 22, 25 meters on it? calling for Samba. Had a Samba come in before to the call but wind us. And um, yeah, just came out to this nice little bit of a clearing here on the property and I thought I'd call again and had a fellow doe run in. Is that normal? Uh, I've called a couple in but not many. With a Samba call? Yeah. But yeah, not many. So they're just coming to see what you are, have a look? Yeah, don't know. I don't know whether baby fellows make that noise or what but I could do with the wind in her face. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I can't believe how fast they just ran. That's crazy. So we just got honked at by another Samba. And then before that, we saw another four Samba. We only got footage of one of them, a little snack pack that was just lagging behind. Yeah, so we've seen a shit ton of deer this afternoon. I've got not much footage. Rolling the phone, going lightweight because we've done a lot of K's, but yeah, it's been tough. Just swirling winds mainly. But we've got two hours of light left, so we're gonna make our way back up to more the middle of the property and hopefully there'll be some other deer out feeding in some of the gullies in there. Oh my god. Yeah, what just happened? I was talking and the deer ran off. Another sample. <laughs> Just in here. Oh yeah, it would have smelt it, but I could have shot up. There's deer everywhere. I just can't see him until they run away. Down to this gully, and as we were walking in, there's like four or five samba down here. 
and she probably just got to like 30 meters of the bow. But yeah, they were onto us. Spewing. How far are we? Ah, uh, it's about 32 here, but I didn't have a shot. I should have maybe crouched down or something, I don't know. No, I don't know if you could have done much else. You did good that it went back to feeding. I did my best. You got close. Mm. Oh, it was cool kind of being that close without them knowing I was here. Yeah. <sighs> oh, let's get this camera up and get out of here.